In today's lecture, we'll be looking at what the rule of law is and what exactly it entails. To begin with, let's undertake the basic reasoning behind this principle. If the legal system successfully upholds the rule of law, then the openness and the clarity of law is ensured. Citizens will be free from rules that are arbitrary or unfair, as well the misuse of governmental power. This, in turn, will ensure the protection of our basic liberties and fundamental human rights. Several theorists have developed their own ideas on what, on what exactly the rule of law is. Nonetheless, they all agree on a single point, that is, the rule of law demands the need for everyone, especially authorities such as the government, to be subject to the law and for all disputes to be resolved within the bounds of the law. Among the most prominent theorists was A.V. Dicey. He believed that the supremacy of parliament coupled with the rule of law would ensure citizens' protection from arbitrary government rule. Dicey divided his theory of the rule of law into three further concepts. Concept number one. The supremacy of regular law as opposed to the influence of arbitrary power. In simple terms, this means that no one can be punished or interfered with unless the law authorizes it. As Dicey stated, a man can be punished for breach of the law, but he cannot be punished for anything else. Dicey also stressed that all actions of government bodies have to be authorized by law. This was seen in the case of Entick versus Carrington, whereby the actions of the executive to issue a warrant were held to be outside of what the law allowed. There was no legal right to issue the warrant as the law hadn't authorized it and as such, the act was unlawful. Concept number two, no man is above the law. Here Dicey is insisting on equality for all, including the government, before the law. Thus, all sections of society should be subject to the ordinary law of the land, administered by the ordinary law courts with no exemptions for those in power. Concept number three, that the general principles of the Constitution result from judicial decisions from the courts. Dicey argued that in a country without a written constitution, such as England, personal liberty becomes part of the Constitution. When the decisions of the court allow it and that such an approach was more advantageous, this topic will be covered in more detail in public law. But for now, this is all we'll be doing. In the next lecture, we'll look at how the rule of law is central to the protection of human rights in the UK.